All right, in this first example, um, solving trig functions, you have to solve this and find out what x is. And since there's nothing in here that, that's going to help solve it, if I move the sign over, I see that I'm going nowhere. So I think about what happens if I square both sides. So I'm going to try that. Now, the danger of squaring both sides is when you get your final answers, it's really important to check them in the original because sometimes you get answers that are false answers and don't really work in the original. All right, so when I square this, right, I get cosine squared x plus 2 cosine x plus 1 equals sine squared x. That was kind of easy. Now what happens is it sure would be nice if I could have it all in cosine or all in sine. And then I remember, well, there's a trig identity for sine squared. You know that, right? 1 minus cosine squared. So let's put that in and see what it looks like. And what did we say that was? 1 minus cosine squared. You have these trig identities, hopefully. Um, now I'm going to move everything on one side, and when I do, I'm going to subtract the 1 and add the cosine squared. So what that gives me is 2 cosine squared x plus 2 cosine x equals 0. The 1's are going to cancel out. So now if I want to continue solving this, I notice that I could factor out a 2. Oh, and a cosine x, so let's do that. 2 cosine x. This is starting to look promising here. So then I have uh, cosine, cosine x plus 1. You with me so far? Now I can solve each part. I can set each part equal to 0. So 2 cosine x equals 0 and cosine x plus 1 equals 0. This one's easy. Divide by 2, you get cosine x equals 0. And where does cosine equal 0? And you can go to your circle chart or um, some other methods that you might use, but you're going to come up with pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. For those two answers, all right, let's do this one. Cosine x equals negative 1. So where does the cosine x equal negative 1? Any idea? So cosine x equals negative 1 at pi. All right, so there we go. Those are our three answers. Now remember what I said, when you solve something by squaring it, sometimes you get some answers that don't work. So that means we need to test all of these answers in the original. So let's backtrack a little bit, and I'm going to erase all of this work here. And let's go back to the original problem that we started with without squaring it. And now we have to check our answers in that original problem. So let's check pi over 2. So that means cosine pi over 2 plus 1 has to equal sine pi over 2. And how do we check that? Well, what's cosine pi over 2? That's 0 plus 1. What's sine of pi over 2? That's 1. 0 plus 1 equal 1? Yeah. So pi over 2 checked. All right. What else do I have to check? 3 pi over 2. All right, so let's check that. Cosine 3 pi over 2 plus 1 has to equal the sine of 3 pi over 2. So now what happens? What's the cosine of 3 pi over 2? Hope you know that's 0 plus 1. What's the sine of 3 pi over 2? That's negative 1. Uh-oh, 1 equal negative 1? Not true. I have to rule out that answer. All right, I got one more to check, right? Let's see if pi checks. So let's check that one out. We said pi, so that means cosine pi. We're putting pi into the original. 
All right, what is the cosine of pi? Negative 1 plus 1. What's the sine of pi? 0. 0 equals 0. Yeah, that one checked. So two of the answers are valid. One is not. So remember, when you're solving some of these tricky equations, you have to check your answers in the original because when you're squaring things, you change <clears throat> the value of the original equation. and So some of the answers you get are not quite true. So, there we go. Okay, here we go with another problem. This one's a little bit tricky, but we're going to solve it anyway. We'll move one, add one to both sides, so then I get 2 cosine 3t equals 1. Divide both sides by 2, cosine 3t equals a half. Well, I'm pretty much done in terms of the solving, so where is the cosine equal to a half? And remember, I'm looking just on the interval from, um, from 0, from 0 to 2 pi. Not including 2 pi, because 2 pi and 0 will give us the same answer. So this interval we want all the answers for this that would fit in that interval. Here's the tricky part, though. If the cosine of 3t equals 1 half, what angle here has a cosine of 1 half? And if you look, up, look that up, you should get the answer pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. Here's the catch, though. 3t is equal to 5 pi over 3. So 3t equals pi over 3. I need to solve for t. So multiply both sides by 1 third and you get t equals pi over 9. And on this one, 3t equals 5 pi over 3. I bet you can do this one by yourself now. So t equals Divide both sides by 3 or multiply by 1 third and you get 5 pi over 9 for your two answers. So if this value, up until this point we always had just a plain x there, so we didn't have this extra little step. So be careful on these and I'm sure you can do them. Good luck. Okay, here's another one, very similar. Instead of 3t, we have a pi over 2. So again, we have to be careful with this one. All right, first step, move the 3 over. So 3 tan pi over 2 equals negative 3. What do we do next? Hopefully you said divide by 3. So tan pi over 2 equals negative 1. So now what we need to do is th using the interval, and the interval for tan is going to be from 0 to pi, where is, is uh, the tan pi over 2 equal to a half, or where is the tangent, excuse me, equal to negative 1? And the only place on that interval that the tangent is equal to negative 1 is 3 pi over 4. So 3 pi over 4 is the answer. But that's the answer for pi over 2. That's the angle. Pi over 2, when pi over 2 is 3 pi over 4, I get negative 1. So I still need to solve that for, you know what, this was supposed to be an x, not a pi. I think I copied it wrong when I did the original. Let's just fix that. There we go. So now I have x over 2 equals 3 pi over 2. Solve it for x. x equals, multiply both sides by 2, and you get 3 pi over 2. And that is the only answer. Hey, it's important to copy the problem right. What gave me the clue? I had pi's on both sides when I usually am solving for x or t or something. So make sure you copy the problem right or you have huge problems. All right, good luck with this stuff. All right, here's another one similar to the 2 cosine 3t minus 1. All right, first thing to do, subtract 3 from both sides. So 3 tangent x over 2 equals negative 3. How about divide by 3? So tan x over 2 equals negative 3 over 3, negative 1, right? So then you have to look on the interval, and we're doing the interval from 0 to 2 pi, 
And we're not including 2 pi because that's all the way around again are the same answers for 0. So that's why the notation has a curved line in the same. But you knew that, right? So where, where does the tangent of some value equal negative 1? And if you look on that interval, right, the only value is 3 pi over 4. So 3 pi over 4, the tangent of 3 pi over 4 equals negative 1. So what does x equal? Remember, we have to do the same thing we did on the last one with the 3t. So we're going to do x over 2 equals 3 pi over 4. And then multiply both sides by 2 because we're solving for x. And x equals 3 pi over 2. So these are a little bit tricky in that they have an extra step um, for your final answer. You know, you can also check these with your graphing calculator. So you could check putting 3 pi over 2 in place of x and see if that works out. And indeed it should. All right, so what are we going to do next? I have one more that I want to do. Let me clear my screen here. So again, we're solving this quadratic equation, so let's move the 4 over. So I get secant squared x minus 2 tan x minus 4 equals 0. And it looks like it's going to be a type of factoring problem, but I need all the same units, so I need either or all the same trig functions. I need it all in secant or all in tangent. And then I look at my trusty little rule page and I see that secant squared is 1 plus tan squared. So I'm going to just do a replacement here. 1 plus tan squared x minus 2 tan x minus 4 equals 0. Now simple add some like terms tan squared x minus 2 tan x minus 3 equals 0. And hopefully you know this factors, right? This is kind of a no-brainer. Do you know what it factors to? tan x minus 3 tan x plus 1. Minus 3 plus 1 is minus 3. And minus 3 tan x plus 1, 2, it checks, equals 0. So now I set each part equal to 0. So I do tan x e minus 3 equals 0, so tan x equals 3, and tan x equals negative 1, right? And then, where does tan equal negative 1? And hopefully, you realize that it's negative pi over 4, and I know that sometimes you're going to want to call that 7 pi over 4, right? But you've got to call it negative pi over 4 because, do you know why? Um, inverse tangents are only uh, valid in the first and fourth quadrant, so I can't go around that way to get to the answer. So, there we go. And what about this one? If you start looking on your chart, it's not there, right? So what do you do? How about this? X equals arc tan 3. When they're not in the chart, you use inverse tangent. X, whatever angle it is, it's the angle that fits with tangent of 3. It has a tangent of 3. And um, so, to be exact, that's the best way to give the answer on that one. Okay, so I know that seemed a little bit weird, but when you're looking them up, minus 1 is on your little circle chart. 3 isn't, so what do you do? And you say, well, whatever angle it is, the tangent of it is 3. So it's some angle that has a tangent of 3. And there you go for your answers to that one. Okay? Good luck.